How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to talk about VLANs or virtual local area networks. A VLAN is a logical segmentation of ports on a switch. Yes, there are such a thing as VXLANs or VLANs in uh, virtual, virtual environments. But in this case, what we're going to do is just talk about the traditional VLAN. We'll get to the other stuff later when it comes to virtualization. But uh, VLANs essentially allow us to take a switch and put ports in specific logical groupings. So let's say I have VLAN 10 and I have VLAN 20. I can decide to put ports 1 through 10 in VLAN 10 and put ports 11 through 20 in VLAN 20. And I might have a specific purpose for VLAN 10, like maybe that's for HR computers and v VLAN 20 is for marketing computers so that you know we can keep those logically separated and really easier to manage for us because when we logically segment networks using VLANs it makes us as IT professionals it gives us easier uh, configurations and more organization if we wanted to apply let's say access control list to the VLANs and block one from accessing the accessing the other without needing to buy a completely new switch every time we need to set up a separate network. Sometimes using VLANs to create secure network segments is referred to as a secure enclave. If your goal is to isolate certain systems using VLANs, then you might see the terminology secure enclave. You can also group unused ports into a dedicated VLAN, often referred to as a black hole VLAN. If you have any questions about the terminology behind VLANs and what they are, let's go ahead and comment below. But for now, I would like you to open up Packet Tracer if you haven't already. Pause the video, open up Packet Tracer and follow along because when you follow me as I do these tasks, and I do these configurations, it's going to really help you understand better. Because it's one thing for me to tell you what the definition is. It's one thing for you to read about the definition. It's another thing for you to actually apply the concept. That's where the real learning happens, at least in my experience. So let's jump right into setting up VLAN. I'm just going to do a simple demonstration here where in Packet Tracer we go down to switches on the bottom here and we go to click the first switch there, which it should be 2960. Drop it in your topology. I'm gonna to zoom in a couple times just to make it easier to see. And we're gonna get two different PCs. I'm grabbing this PC and this PC. And I'm gonna go first connect these PCs to the switch ports, right? So as I click the PCs, I'm going to fast ethernet zero plugging it in and then we're going to plug this first PC in a fast Ethernet 01. Keep in mind that this is going to be important where we're plugging devices in. But in the real world you want to keep up with this and you want to know and be able to say where you're plugging your stuff in. I'm going to click fast Ethernet 011 and what I mean by that is we can do an example of it in Packet Tracer is let's say I've decided I want to do VLAN 10 and I want to do VLAN 20 that you are somehow, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet, Word document, something, you're documenting what ports are going into what VLAN. I can't tell you how many times I've come into networks and there's no documentation. So don't be the person that doesn't have documentation. Be the one that has it. Be the hero. I'm going to go ahead and say 1 through 10 are going to be in VLAN 10. And that's fast Ethernet in this case. And then for 20, we're just going to, as an example, do F0, uh, 11 uh, through F0 or through 20 are going to be in VLAN 20. We'll do something else with the others. Then you have your documentation. You're documenting what ports go in what VLAN. And I promise you, you will love to have that later. If you ever have to decide, why is this device not communicating with the other one? Why can't this device send traffic? You could always go back to your documented VLAN mappings and have it. I'm going to show you how to do this on Cisco devices. The same concept applies across any vendor, but 
this is this is going to be Cisco because there's a lot of Cisco devices out there as you will see in your career. And if you learn on Cisco, I would venture to say you can do it on just about any other device. So you're going to want to connect into the switch on packet transfer. Of course, you can just click on that and go to CLI. And then I'm going to maximize that so we can see the Cisco iOS prompt. We're going to type EN to get to privilege exec, go to global config mode. And then I'm just going to set a host name because that's my habit. I like to set the host name so I know where I'm at. And then configuring a VLAN is what we're doing now. It's not as hard as it may seem. You actually just type VLAN, the number, which is the VLAN ID, hit enter. And you've created your VLAN already. That was all you had to do to create your VLAN. But we may, for documentation and human recognition purposes, give it a name. I'm just going to call it HR. And then I'm going to type VLAN 20, which will immediately put me into the configurations of VLAN 20. Hit enter. And then name that, let's say, IT. And then enter. And I'm going to exit out. I've configured, oops, I've configured my VLANs, but I'm missing something. Based on what I said earlier, what do you think I'm missing? I'll give you some time to think about that. Pause the video, contemplate. If you guessed, you're missing the ports. You're absolutely correct. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to type int range F01 through 10. Remember what we documented or earlier? When I do int range, it does what it says. It goes into that range of ports. I'm not just configuring one, but I'm configuring all of them I've just gone into. Hit enter. My prompts change to config-if-range. I'm now in a range of ports. I'm going to type switch port mode access because uh, we want our ports to be in access mode in order for them to be assigned to a specific VLAN. And then we're going to do switch port port access VLAN 10. Hit that and they're going to be in VLAN 10 now. So I'm going to type exit type do show VLAN. Why am I typing do anytime you're in a mode above privilege exec mode and you're wanting to do show you have to type do. I'm doing do show VLAN and this shows us our VLAN database. Notice how by default and this is how most um, switches are uh, whether it's Cisco, Netgear, or you name it, all the ports by default are in the default VLAN of VLAN 1. When we moved 1 through 10 into 10, it of course moved those into VLAN 10. And the switch keeps up with this using a VLAN database file, or a VLAN database, and it keeps up, it, we can, we'll talk about that file later. But for now, just know once you've configured the VLAN, you always want to confirm that it your configuration has actually done what you intended for it to do. Configure and confirm uh, is something to keep in your mind. So IT, that's going to be the next one we do. So do int range F011 through 20. Switch port. And I could have just done up. I'm just practicing the commands. Switch port access VLAN 20. And then exit, do show VLAN, enter. And we've got VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 configured. I actually did 11 through 24 when earlier I had documented uh, 11 through 20, which we can just change that right here. So sorry about that, but we, ch we changed it. Notice how the port status changes when you move a port. We are going to now set the IP address of these systems. They're going to be in, in uh, two different networks. And ultimately, we should not be able to ping between them. Even if we uh, gave them IP addresses in the same networks, they're in different VLANs, so they shouldn't be able to connect to each other. Why is that? Because there's a logical boundary now. This is happening at layer two. So write that down in your notes. VLANs are normally a layer two boundary. When I talk layers, I'm talking about the OSI model. They're separating it in the frame. They're not really a layer three thing. It's not really dependent on the IP address. 
So what do I mean by that? Anytime a packet hits the switch port, so as soon as this PC sends traffic to the switch port, the switch is going to know to tag that traffic with the VLAN ID. So technically this PC has no idea it's in a VLAN. It's the switch that knows and it's the switch that's adding that VLAN ID to the frame. So keep that in mind. That's what makes a VLAN a VLAN. Let's do this now. So let's go into uh, the PCs. I'm going to go into the IP configuration. I'm going to type 192.168.0. 10.10 .10. we're not going to use any of these other options right now just for now leave it at that we're going to go over here I'm going to make this PC 20.10 so desktop IP configuration 192.168.20.10 I'm hitting tab just let the subnet mask autofill to the class C subnet mask and we've got our two PCs in their VLANs. So if I tried to ping right now between the two, it wouldn't work. So let's say I did like ping 192.168.20.10. They're on the same switch, different networks. How do I know that? Because of the IP schemes I picked, they're on different networks, but they're also in different VLANs. So they wouldn't even be able to communicate if they had the same IP scheme. What would we need in order for these two to communicate? We'll do that in a future video, but I want to I want you to think about that. We would need a router because these are two different networks. And that might be weird to think about. It's the same switch. You might be used to thinking one switch, one network, but because of VLANs, we can have multiple networks on the same VLAN, further maximizing the money we spend on these devices when you see that that's another benefit of a VLAN is you don't have to go buy a bunch of different switches just for the purpose of segmentation you can do that on here using VLANs let's add other PCs in here I'm gonna plug in the straight copper straight through into port 2 give it an IP we'll get put it in the same network as 10 because that's we want those to be in VLAN 10 and by the way, this third octet, it doesn't have to match the VLAN ID. I'm just choosing to do that. You know, it could be 0 0.11 and it, it would this switch wouldn't know the difference. It would still tag that frame with a VLAN ID. Then I'll grab this other PC, put it over there, and plug it in. But I missed it. Don't plug it into 3 plug it into 11 or 12 this one was already in 11 so when I plugged it into 12 it's in VLAN 20 you have to be careful about that because if you're not keeping documentation as you just saw me at almost make that mistake there if you're not making uh, documentation you may lose track of where devices are connected and you may unintentionally connect a device to a VLAN it doesn't need to be in. For that reason, you normally will shut down the unused ports. So it's a good habit to get into where if, if you're not, let's do that just as practice. If you're not using the port, meaning it's not actively being used by a PC or a phone or a server or you name it, Everything ultimately has to connect into a switch at some point. If it's, if it's not in use, that port, turn it off. Let's practice this. I'm going to turn off 3 through 10, just as an example. So int, do int range F0 3 through 10, and then just type shut, and it'll shut it down. So it, you see it's the log here told us that these ports have been in, administratively shut down. So if, even if someone was able to get into our data center, some malicious hacker, or even a penetration tester that's doing a legit test on our network, and they try to plug like a Raspberry Pi or a, um, any type of device into that port, a, any port that's open should not turn on because we've turned it off. And we'll talk about switch security as well in a different video. But you can also have security enabled on a switch port 
to make sure that it detects a unauthorized device and automatically shuts down. But why not just manually shut it down too? So you're going to want to do that for all unused ports. I just wanted to show you one example of that. Now that's how you set up a VLAN. Let me know if there's any questions you've got about this, if you need help, and I will definitely help you. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.